All right, good morning, everyone. Um, if others come in, they'll just catch up with us. But I want to I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out to giving up one of your Saturday to attend our session today. Um, this session is Teaching the Greatest Hits with Google Workspace. Uh, my name is Gilbert Beretta. I am one of the newest um, academic technology coaches um, here in Northside. I've been in education for nine years. Uh, seven of those years I was at Passmore. I taught um, kinder, first and fourth grade. And then two years I moved to be the writing AST at John Glenn. And I'm honored to be a part of these seven schools. I service um, Adams Hill, Allen, Cody, um, Glenn, Forrester, Fisher, and Valley High. Um, I also, it's nice to have a co-host today and I'll let Lucia introduce herself. Hi, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, my name is Lucia Soto. I am also an academic technology coach and I service six campuses. So I support Bronze Station, Carson, Colonies North, Driggers, Fernandez, and Hausman. Um, before Gilbert, I was the newest tech coach, so it's nice to not be the new one anymore. And so before we get started, um, you can follow us both on Twitter. Those are our handles. Um, we would love to connect with you and collaborate and uh, be sure to tweet out your experience today, this morning, um, using the hashtag NISD Summit. All right, so today is, we're gonna go over our learning goals. What are our mission and vision for the um, academic technology department and some norms for today? So our learning goals is, what am I, learning today. So today, I will hope that when you leave today, you will learn how to increase student learning, how to support students in learning the content that we're teaching or skills, um, how to support students in being accountable for their learning, which is highly important. Um, why am I learning it? This. Um, to increase student learning of great level content and skills while incorporating Google application in a concurrent environment. So today there's these 10 greatest hits that have the highest impact and I'm just attaching them to a Google workspace, a um, Google suite like docs and PowerPoint um, slides and Jamboard. And then how will I know that I've learned it? I can apply the skills and knowledge learned today and utilize it in my classroom tomorrow. Our mission in the department is to transform learning experiences for students. Our vision is that every day, every student grows in confidence, curiosity, and capability. And this morning's norms is to actively listen and participate, um, always take care of your needs. Um, if you need to take care of the kids, check on the kids, or anything you need to do, uh, feel free to turn off your camera and do and meet those needs. Um, throughout the whole presentation, we would love to have your camera on, mic off, and then whatever is learned here leaves here. And then always participate in the chat if you have any questions. The CIA is also going to be manning the chat. So any questions that are coming in, I'll be happy to answer. We both can answer them um, for you. So this is our objective. Today we will learn how to increase student learning with the knowledge and tools to effectively implement John Hattie's and Robert Marzano's 10 strategies to help students learn concepts and skills using Google Workspace. And you might've heard of these two men, um, John Hattie and Robert Marzano. Um, so we're gonna go over a lot of the things that they collaborated in that are the 10 strategies. So you might be asking yourself, you know, what are the greatest hits? Well, the greatest hits are 10 instructional practices that reliably increase student learning whatever, whenever they are applied in the classroom. They emerge from findings of tens of thousands of studies that, of what was worked in the classroom across the world. So John Hattie and Robert Mizano have synthesized these studies and ranked hundreds of teaching strategies by the contribution they make to student learning. These hits sit at the top of these rankings. So these are the powerful 10 um, high impact strategies that are really going to make a difference in your classroom. You know, I want to know why should we use these? So the hits will have the strongest impact on student learning when used as part of an ongoing improve, in, improvement cycle embedded in professional learning communities. And you might have heard 
with, especially with John Hattie, the effect size. So the effect size is a measure of contribution and education intervention makes to student learning. It allows us to move beyond questions about whether this intervention worked or not to the questions about how well an intervention worked is varying in context. So this evidence, this evidence supports more scientific and rigorous approach to building professional knowledge. So the effect size is an important tool for reporting and interpreting effectiveness for specific teaching practices and intervention. So these are, I'm going to go over what each one is, the top 10 greatest hits. Um, so these, what HITS stands for, the acronym is High Impact Teaching Strategies. And this QR code I sent in the email, it's the, um, I'll pause it. If you need to take notes, I even sent it in the email, but you're going, this is gonna take you to a handout that's gonna look like this. And here you could just use the Jamboard and use stickies and just jot down ideas, any notes that you wanna take as I go over each one. So I'll go ahead and we'll put that in the chat. And all it's going to do is just make a copy and you'll be added in your drive. All right, so we're going to dive into what these teaching strategies are that have the highest impact. So here are some examples. All right, so number one is going to be goal, setting goals. So setting goals is based on student needs that helps a teacher plan and sequence appropriate activities for students. Making these goals explicit to students help them understand what knowledge and skills they are working on. So if you notice at the beginning of our presentation, I had learning targets, I had some vision, particularly for this meeting, but for in a classroom setting, this was made in Jamboard. So I am definitely going to make sure my students know exactly what their learning targets, what are our objectives. And then we have the assignment. So students know exactly what the assignment's gonna look like in Schoology. Um, when we're moving from, um, you know, what I do, you do, we do kind of thing. And then I thought for something for the lower grades, you know, we have some welcome tasks. So then it's going to be, you know, I'm going to use, this is what I want during writer's workshop. I want a pencil, you can eat your paper, your camera on and a smile. So this is just something that lets students know exactly what um, you're going to be able to, you're going to be teaching them. And then over here, we have goal setting. This is also made in Jamboard. And I also put it in, um, slides as well, but this is just for students to think about what are some goals that I want to accomplish in reading and writing, phonics, math, science, and social studies to get me to where I need to be. And it's, it's so important when we're having them take ownership in what they're learning. And so in here, students will just, you know, I wanna add, you know, 10 more new sight words into my, um, to my toolbox that I really wanna learn and know. So those are some goals that students can make for themselves. And then I love to use um, interest surveys when I was in the classroom. It really, and I liked how it's tied to reading. You really get to know your students. And a lot of this and these, um, a lot of these strategies is really getting to know who your students are, their strengths, their weaknesses. And so when you're doing these interest surveys, you get to really know them as a person. And so um, I love to just find out what they're, what's current out there. You know, as teachers, you know, we don't know the latest, sometimes we don't know the latest stuff or the latest show or the latest toy. And so this gives us a big insight. So when I'm able to sit down and reflect, and you know, when I'm doing character traits in my, you know, whole group breeding lesson, and I see some faces that they're just not getting it, I can tie it into something that they're interested in, some show they saw or some movie that just came out that had that sort of conflict in there, or they overcome that character trait or anything that I'm teaching and reading. The second one is structuring lessons. So structuring lessons or a series of lessons assists you as the teacher to scaffold new, new knowledge and skills. So your plan ways to maximize student engagement, increase time on tasks and review student progress. This helps to improve classroom management as students know what to expect and what is expected of them. So here is Catlin Tucker. She is using um, a 5E model on how to um, 
for her instruction when she's planning. So she's talking about what it looks like when she's in the engage part, you know, what, what kind of activities am I gonna use for the brainstorming? What questions am I gonna ask? And you'll notice during this presentation that a lot of these um, have connections to one another. Um, then you have what tools can I use? So she's attaching the tool to Padlet or she's attaching it to Jamboard or Mintometer. So this is a great resource that you'll get a little bit later. Um, and then she has a planning sheet on what she's gonna insert her objectives and then what tasks she really wants students to use. And she also has videos on her website that really explain each one. And then this is something that you'll also see um, when we get to feedback and that um, strategy, but this is just setting goals. It kind of gives you a glimpse of your classroom. So after I'm teaching a lesson, you know, I'm making my rounds you know, either in person or on Zoom. And I really want to know where are my students? Are they at the master stage? Or are they an expert? So then when I go back, when we come back tomorrow, I have a really better understanding if, you know, if this really, if this learning really sticked or if I need to go back and troubleshoot something. Um, so this is another great way to, um, and you'll see it again in feedback, um, another way to really assess where your kids are at. The next one is explicit teaching. And explicit teaching is when students are often negotiating new language as well as different classroom expectation. So being explicit about what students need to do and how to do it helps students complete tasks independently. And that's what we want. Explicitly linked lesson activities to learning goals help students understand the relevance of what they are doing. So this is an example of starting with the end in mind, backward design. What do I want my students to do independently by themselves by the end of my lesson? And if I have that, that big picture, then everything else will fall in place. What I want them to do in guided practice, what I want them to do in whole group, um, and et cetera. So this is just an example of an idea, a suggestion of um, a way to make learning stick, starting from the end in mind, starting backwards. What I really want them to do and apply independently by themselves. The next one is a work examples, number four. And so work examples are explicitly set out to achieve a step, a given task or solving a problem. Working through these steps with students and giving them time to practice helps you, the teacher, identify areas of confusion or misunderstanding. Adding annotations when you're doing it on the Elmo or when you're in small group um, and you're working through this example can also support understanding highly new terminology. So in here, if I was a reading specialist or teaching guided reading, I could um, videotape a small group. And these videos are not very long. I can do maybe 30 seconds or just something to teach that skill. Um, if I'm doing a lesson on the ammo, I'm doing a multiplica uh, multiplication, I can insert you know, my annotations on how I solve that problem. In math, this is another, if I'm doing um, guided math and I'm at my math table and I see someone doing an excellent job on how they solved it or where they got to, I can videotape it real quick and then I can upload it to these things. And what the idea was for this guided reading one and this math one is that I'm uploading these short videos and, and I'm not recording the student, I'm just recording you know, their hands and what they're doing. Um, I can upload them. So then if I'm a student at home and I'm like, Mr. Beretta taught this and I just forgot, I can go into Schoology and these are published. I can go and click on it and I can, re I can see the video of exactly how he saw this math problem or how this student um, used a reading strategy or how they used um, sound boxes correctly. So all of these are things that we can show students because they really need an example to help them be successful during independent time. The next one is collaborative learning. So collaborative learning builds interpersonal and communication skills and fosters new relationship with peers. So this really works with social, social and emotional learning. So when students are working collaboratively, it allows you, the teacher, the time to provide additional support and observe areas of strength in individuals or in groups. So collaborative learning tasks allow a teacher to plan groups in ways that maximize learning and provides a safe learning environment. So these are just some examples. Uh, there's the examples that I'm sharing, they're endless. There's so many things that are out there and so many things that you're doing now in your classroom. But this is just to um, illustrate what exactly they mean by collaborative learning. So if I was just reading a book to my students and they can work collaborative, 
collaboratively and in the groups. We're doing a summary. Somebody went, somebody wanted, but so then they can do it in the Jamboard and they could um, write some notes down and put them where they needed to go. If I was doing science all about frogs, they're going to work together in a group and they're going to figure out what do frogs need, what they have and what they are. And it's just a way for kids. And I always felt in the classroom that the kids learn better than me. <laughs> and so I always felt like, you know, when they learn together and their, their other peers are explaining it, they, they get it for some reason. And I love that. So this is just a great way for um, collaborative learning. And these are not all of the ideas. I'm sure you have other ideas as well, but these are just two ways to demonstrate what they mean about collaborative learning. Uh, multiple exposure. So this one really doesn't have um, any resources that you'll get, but there's just some photos that I put in here um, just to get to a better understanding of what they mean by multiple exposure. So in each content area will involve learning new language, learning new skills, sometimes um, new ways of working in the classroom. So students need the opportunity to develop these competencies and feel comfortable learning in different ways and different contexts. So basically, um, when I was in kinder where, you know, letters are so important, letters and sounds. And so in here, for multiple exposure, they're getting, they're being exposed to different ways. So we're doing it on the anchor chart, we're matching it. So they're on the carpet, everyone had their own sound card, I think they only had a picture, and then they had to come up and match it with the letter. And then over here, they're doing it in their name during guided reading, maybe in a center, they're building that letter. And then we're finding it in the books. And then they're gonna go home and find something in their toy box, or they're gonna find something at home that matches that letter and sound and then bring it in. So I snap a picture and that is our alphabet chart. Um, so these are just ways to show you what they mean by multiple exposure. So whenever I teach something in math, they're gonna see it in, guide, in whole group, they're gonna see it in guided math groups, they're gonna see it in center. So multiple exposures of the same context, but in different content and having those opportunities. Questioning. So questioning is the next um, high impact strategy. And questioning is students sometimes are unfamiliar with the use of questioning as a classroom strategy, but the right kind of questions can help you as a teacher get to know your students. So this kind of ties into setting goals when I'm doing the entrance survey. So you'll see that a lot of these are connecting to one another and we get to know their strengths, their interests and experiences. So questioning is also an an important way to engaging students because I'm relating it to something that they know in their interest, scaffolding their learning and giving the opportunities to use language in meaningful ways. So here, when I taught the lower grades, I always did a picture of the day. And so it really worked with inferencing. And even though, you know, when I taught fourth grade, that was just a struggle of making inferences or inferring. And so it's so highly important that we do it even in the lower grades. So I will just put a picture up there and we really get to know, you know, who's in the picture, what are they doing, what is happening and getting their minds and their thinking about what is happening. Because eventually when they get older, you know, these, when they're reading, there's, no, there's not a lot of pictures in these books. So they really have to use that skill of inferring. And then you might have seen this on campus if um, somebody that's a writing AST, not a, a science AST or a science facilitator at your campus. So the, the last science meeting they had when we met before we shared this out, they had the idea of about would you rather questions. And I thought, you know what, what about um, I designed something so teachers can take with them. And the idea around would you rather is I'm teaching a unit, say, you know, four regions of Texas, or I'm teaching a, a unit in science or something in social studies. And I'm not gonna tell the students what exactly what our unit is. I wanna know their prior knowledge or what do they know about it that would help me drive the instruction moving on. So I could put, would you rather, you know, explore space or explore the ocean? And then ocean is what my really unit, my unit is or any questions, come, any questions that pertain to that unit just to get an idea of where your kids are at and what their knowledge is, uh, background knowledge. This one is just question of the day. This can work like attendance too, if you needed to, if you're just gonna put a question. And so each student, I remember in the upper grades, I would give everyone a number. And so on the Jamboard, they would just put it on there uh, with their name. And so that is just a quick way for me to take attendance, but also if, they, if there's any question from yesterday that um, they just didn't get, kind of gives me a way of assessing how the lesson went or what things I need to change. Over here is more of the lower grades, you know, as you know, 
this concurrent teaching, you know, I miss having everybody on the carpet, but this is just a way for them to, I can present a question and they just find a spot. They answer it on their Jamboard, on their sticky, and then they find somewhere to sit. Or we could do like sharing, everyone's name is on the carpet. And so I can pick and choose instead of going through my gallery and Zoom and trying to find them. Um, it's just a quick way. And I, kids will love moving where they want to sit and just as they imagined they would have done um, in the classroom. The next one is feedback. So feedback is, and so um, these next ones, it's gonna be feedback, metacognitive strategy and differentiated um, teaching. It's all gonna be combined in one. So the first part of it is giving regular feedback to students and provides opportunities for students to seek feedback, really builds that strong partnership between you and the students. Regular feedback that explicitly identifies a student's strength and areas uh, that need improvement helps students understand what is expected and what they're aiming for. And so when we move into differentiated teaching, it allows you, the teacher, to vary learning goals, teaching and assessing strategies, assessment strategies, and pace of learning for each student. And it allows you to maintain high challenges for each of our students that provide high level of support in the classroom. So this one, I really like the part where you know, I really like how we're right, we can write notes for students, we can give that feedback and they can keep that sticky note somewhere. But then I also thought, you know, I could bring it up another notch and do a personal video for them. And so I can record myself, you know, Gilbert, I really like how you did this in guided reading or during guided math, you're making so much improvement. And this video is like 30 seconds or a minute, no more than a minute. And so you're just having that feedback in that video they can keep in their drive for so long until they're here in our side. <laughs> but that, that is also another personal way of writing that, either a personal video or some sort of note um, to provide student feedback. And then this is just after self-reflection. I did a lot of this, I think we do a lot of this as teachers is after we're reflecting on you know, our lesson or a year or a week, like what are some glows that are happening and what are some grows? And I think that that has to also tie down to our students as well as individuals. Like what is something that, you know, me, Gilbert, what are some things that I, have mastered and that I'm very proud of? And then what are some things that I need to work on? And that's as a person that really helps you and that feedback on what do I need to do to move on forward? And which kind of connects to, you know, number one, which was setting goals where I want to see myself in the end. And then I, um, I mentioned this again, you'll see this and the feedback is also connects to feedback because in the classroom, I can really see, I can give feedback, you know, you're a master, you're an expert in this. So tomorrow I really want you to work with these students and I want you to, to explain this part or this lesson. Because as we know, students are kind of, you know, they're so powerful that whatever they're, they're explaining to someone really helps um, them understand. So those are the 10 strategies. We just combine eight, nine, and 10. Um, we're gonna move, let me move this. All right, so this next part is our um, exploration time. So this, I'm gonna give you some time to work by yourself independently. You're going to um, explore a lot of the things that I shared today, a lot of those resources. There's some articles that are in this little folder, um, but yeah, there's some tasks I'm gonna go over before we, um, the big chunk of our time is gonna be you exploring. Also, I just wanna mention during this time, you'll please feel free to take care of your needs if you need to do something, um, and then come back after the time is done. Um, our first task is our collaboration time. So I'm going to put um, in the chat, let me exit out. So the collaboration time, you're basically going to go in, get a sticky note. And I also want to mention that a lot of these things, when I was putting this presentation together, a lot of these things I did in the classroom and not even knowing it. Because sometimes we're just doing it and now it's labeled something and now, you know, now I know that it's a high impact strategy and that I want to continue to do it. And then there's other times where I was reflecting, you know, and as I was putting this presentation together and I really thought, you know, I didn't do so much of this part. And now that I'm knowing, and when we know better, we do better, we are um, shifting and shifting our mindset to doing this now. So in this collaboration time, um, you're going to just use a sneaky. And what are some things I want you to jot down, uh, things that you are 
currently implementing in your classroom or in your groups um, that have been highly successful. So what are some things uh, that you're doing in reading that are successful? What are some things that you're doing in math or writing, math? And then also we have friends also in discovery. So what are some things that you're seeing that, that you know, our PE coaches are doing, our art teachers doing, our music? What are some things that you're noticing when you hear that, that feedback from the students and those comments? What are they doing that are making them successful that kind of ties into the greatest hits? So this one, again, you're just going to jot down notes uh, of ideas of any of the 10 hits that you are currently, but now you know that you're doing that's highly successful for students. So you're just going to put some ideas down in there. And then we're going to take a little trip. So this next task is you just scored some awesome tickets to your favorite band. And as you are searching for your seat, so if you're going to some favorite band, some concert, you're going to be searching for your seats. And as you click on each of the seat section, you're going to learn about the hits, the greatest hits. You're going to first in folder one, and I'll show that in just a minute. In the folder, you're going to have like, an, it's just a short little article of what setting goals is or what is feedback. And then the second folder is all of the resources you were just some of the ones that I highlighted today in the PowerPoint, but there's others in that folder too. And if there's anything that you are doing in your classroom that you would love to share, you can email it to me or um, I, could, I could put the email in the chat, but um, we could put that in the folder because everyone's gonna have access to that folder. And I would love for you to um, be able to share a lot of what's successful that's happening in your classroom that some, it can help somebody else. Um, so while you're exploring, be sure to jot down your answers to questions on your handout. So you're going to get a handout. And your handout is going to look like this. And you don't have to use the handout. You can just use anything that's near you, paper, pencil. Um, but here you're just going to use the sticky notes and just jot things down that you notice because later on we're going to share. Um, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, anything that you like in the folder, you can actually just make a copy of it and it'll be added to your drive. So anything that you see of the examples that I shared today, like the feedback, the setting goals, all of that, you could just simply make a copy and it'll be added to your drive and it'll be yours. Uh, okay, so did everyone, I don't know if Lucia put the, everyone has a collaboration time? Yep. And then I'm gonna put the concert one, let me see. Yeah, I put the collaboration time. I just didn't put the auditorium yet. Okay, so this one is the recording sheet. So I'll put that in there. So that's the recording sheet. And that one's gonna look like this. And then I'm also gonna put in this auditorium. And let me find it, I think it's this one. So you need this as well, another tab. And so when you get this auditorium one, it's gonna look like this, it's already published. So you're just gonna click on the tickets. And so these are all of the seat options. And so you're just gonna go through each one. So if I clicked on number one, Remember I mentioned that there's gonna be two folders. The first folder is the what and why. So what is setting goals? Why should we use them? And then the how are all of the resources. So you can uh, feel free to make a copy of them. If you, if anything that sparks something that you're doing in your class, feel free to share that with me too. So I can add it to that folder. And then your set, part of your second task when you're in the auditorium, in your recording sheet, I want you to, let me blow this up. I want you to, you could do choice one or choice two, whichever, you could do both. I just want you to record one or two tips or ideas you want to remember and be able to share with other colleagues. So that's choice one while you're exploring. And then number two, I want you to record one or two tips or ideas you may want to implement this year or next year. So I think we're gonna have about 25 minutes. Um, any questions so far? I'll leave this slide up so you know exactly. The first task is the collaboration. You're just gonna do the sticky notes. So what are things that are successful in your classroom that you're finding and that you're doing in reading that relate to the hits? 
And then task two is looking through those, um, going to those seat sections and exploring and then answering either choice one or choice two. And so within this 25 minutes, you're going to do this and then take your break if you need to, go check on the kids, whatever you need to do to take care of your needs, and then we'll be back after the 25 minutes. Sounds good. You can feel free to turn off your camera and mute yourself, and we'll see you in a bit. I know we had some questions that are coming in. Um, this one is, is this the one you're saying that's view only? Yeah, so this one's just view only, but are you able to use the sticky notes? No? Okay. No. All right, let me go back and change that. All right, now you can refresh and it should work. And is that the also thing for the Explorer? Let me change. I think this one you're just making a copy because it's going to be yours. Okay. So this is the one that I just changed. So you should be able to um, use a sticky note. And then this is the one that you, it's just going to be a copy. So that's just going to save in your drive. And this is where you're just putting your notes down for the expiration time, going the concert one. And get it that way.
All right, we're going to be able to share. Hold on. Okay. All right. Um, in the chat, I'll put the um, we had a request on the the uh, the music that I was playing. Uh, but So this is just the YouTube playlist. Um, all I did was I typed in YouTube in instrumental pop music. There's so many, this is just one of them. Um, but a lot of them sound like that. A lot of them have just piano playing or they have both a piano and the violin. So you can save that. All right, since we have a small group, I was just going, I was, for the bigger group, we we're just going to pick some names. But if you would like to unmute and share some of your thoughts with us, uh, we'll take some time for you to just share out some of the things that you put on the collaboration time with the Jamboard and then the greatest hits, um, the concert one, and anything that you else you want to share that kind of sparked um, something that you're currently doing in the classroom that now you know that it's attached to, you know, this greatest um, 
hits this high impact um, teaching strategy. So if anyone wants to share, you can go ahead and unmute. I'll start if that's okay. Yep, go ahead. Um, one of the things I'm a reading specialist and you know, sometimes the kids are so inundated with reading already that they come to a small group and they're either really excited or they're kind of bummed that they're missing out on whatever they're doing in class. So I brought in the code and go little mouse robot. And regardless of what skill we're teaching, we can program it. And so they're working together on some collaborative learning pieces because not only do they have to know the answer and work together to figure that out, but then they have to work together kind of on that STEM level. So it's got the critical thinking piece to go along with it. And that excites them a little bit more when they have to leave their friends in the classroom to come see me. Thank you for sharing. I like that. Um, anybody else want to share their thinking, their thoughts over what they did during your exploration time? I'll go. Um, okay. Um, for the science, um, I teach, uh, I'm a GT specialist, and so this year our big focus is on biomes. And um, we've been using the uh, Texas Wildlife Association for uh, a lot of the things that we're learning with water and animals, ecosystems, habitats, and they have a number of live Zoom uh, virtual presentations that they give, and they're free. And so going back to collaborative learning um, and, just, and even just hearing it a different way, um, when you expose the kids to um, the same material, but just somebody else says it and it's said in a different way and it's presented in a different way. Um, I find that very helpful for the kids. And um, so it's just another activity out there for you know anyone looking for something different and just bringing somebody outside the school. And they offer so much, um, so many different resources, things that you can order through them, things, uh, they even have um, webinars that are pre-recorded so that um, let's say you're teaching, um, you know, for third grade teachers, um, let's say, you, you know, freshwater ecosystems, uh, they have uh, pre-recorded webinars for the students. So even if you can't book a live presentation at this point in the year, because maybe they're booked at this, you know, for the remainder of the year, um, you know, they do have the pre-recorded ones that you can watch anytime uh, with your students. So it's just, a, it's been a really good source for me. Perfect. Feel free to put it in the chat. I think everyone else would like to uh, learn more about that. I like that idea. Um, anybody else want to share their thinking? Anything you're currently doing in your classroom that is working, that is success, successful for students? All right, we're going to move into um, questions. So we'll take some time for any questions that you saw on the this session today, any questions that you found in the folders that you had questions about, um, anything about the article, um, feel free to um, unmute and let us know um, any questions you might have still. So this might be more of just a, um, a management kind of question. So I, I love how you had the how and the why for each mm -hmm. one of the 10, because that's important for you know teachers mm -hmm. and students to understand why they're doing it and why it's effective. And I absolutely love your different templates. Where do you find those engaging ones or like, What's the process behind that? So if we're trying to create something, we're not spinning our wheels. Are you finding pre-made ones or are you creating them from scratch? All of the ones that are in the folder, um, I created by scratch. So if you want to um, 
work one on one with me, I'll be happy to work with any one of you one on one and um, going through the process of how I did it. Um, so let's go to number two. So uh, for this one, the trick behind it is that in Google, there's not a lot of um, I'm a font person, so I like the fonts that I have on my personal computer or things that I download. And so Google only gives you some only an option to it. So the trick is, is that I created in um, PowerPoint on my personal computer and um, any fonts that I want to use. And then I save it as a picture. And then in Jamboard, which is nice, this new feature is that you can add an image. So whatever I down, what that picture that I downloaded in PowerPoint, I put it into um, Google, the, um, the Jamboard. And so I add it as the background. So then the students can't touch anything, edit anything. Um, all they can use is the sticky notes. So that's kind of the trick behind it. Um, but if any, if you want to work one-on-one, -on -one, especially if you have like bilingual teachers, um, we can work together one-on-one -on -one and create something together. I'll be happy to work with you on that. Um, the same thing goes for, um, like for this one, for PowerPoint is exactly the same thing. Um, I do it in, uh, but this one in particular, I just did it in um, PowerPoint just to get the squares, uh, but everything else around it, um, I used um, this website. I, I guess let's see, I can put it in the, ch oh, she doesn't have access, hold on. I'll put this one in the chat. This is just another way, even though that we love our fonts on our personal computer and you know sometimes we don't like the ones in Google, um, this one can also change um, the way that it looks. And this was just called coolsymbol.com. And so if you type in there in the search bar, whatever text you want to put. So I just put um, Monday, March 29th, and then it gave me this font that's not in um, Google. And then I use Jiffy's to put the little sparkle in the background. So that's the little hack around that part of it. Um, for a Jiffy, um, I shared it. If you don't follow me on Twitter, I did share um, how to do it an easier way. So basically what I did was um, I just typed in Sparkle. And instead of downloading or getting the symbols, all I did was, and this is an easy trick, you just click on it and then you click and you hold it and you drag it to your, um, which one is it? click and then you drop it. So you don't have to do any um, downloading or going to insert picture and doing the URL, it's already there for you. So that is how I did the sparkles behind it. And then basically, so I get the sparkles behind the text, I just went to a range and changed the order of it. So that's the trick behind that part. So if you're not following me, you're missing out on some tricks. <laughs> so that's in there as well. Um, any other questions? Uh, let me see. Um, I just wanted to say I'm from Valley High, and I get your uh, Tech Tuesdays every week, and it has been so helpful to see what's happening throughout um, uh, the district and all the information that you that you give. I take those things and I use it. Uh, it's easy to implement really quick. The kids like it and it just helps to keep them engaged. So I want to tell you, thank you sending out the information. Today was nice. I really liked the part where you gave us the information but gave us time to process and think and play with it um, because that helped me out a lot because I need time to figure it out how I'm going to use it. But your Tech Tuesdays have been very beneficial for me this year. Me and the, the team there at, at Dolly High, we so appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much, Vanessa. And thank you for joining us, too. It's good to see you actually in per, um, and video, too, <laughs> since we're not on the campus. Um, any other questions um, about any of the resources? Uh, that was kind of the trick behind us, Sandra, is you just, I do it in PowerPoint, and then I just upload the image to the Jamboard. You can create it in Jamboard. The, the run around with that is that you have to put um, a text box so the students can't touch anything that's on it. But I just feel like the fastest way is just putting, making it into a JPEG and then uploading it into um, the document just so they won't touch anything or move anything. Any other questions? About any of the resources? Um, 
we'll be happy, any of the tech coaches will be happy to work with you one-on-one. -on -one, so don't forget to reach out to them as well. All right, so the resources that are in those folders, um, all you have to do is simply just file and um, make a copy. Those are all yours. If there's anything that you're doing in your classroom or at your school that is working and is successful and it's attached to these greatest hits, because we know that these greatest hits have the highest impact for student learning, I would love for you to share with me and so I could put it in the folder because all of you will have access to the folder um, in the follow-up email, but we can also put it in the chat here as well. So in the chat is, here's going to be the folder of all the resources. Um, it would also be in the follow-up email later on um, this week. And then if you want to share anything, please feel free to email me and uh, we'll put that in there as well. Because we would love to share the wealth of all of your great ideas and all the ideas that were shared today. Any other questions so far? Everyone's good? All right, so here we are, uh, our academic technology. Um, these are all the awesome people that I get to work with every day. Um, always reach out to your tech coach, um, even if it's not me. Uh, we all can help you in any way that we can, and we're happy to help you. Um, so I'm also going to put in the chat um, our website. So this website is um, where you can meet other coaches learn about even your coach if you're brand new to your campus, and then any of the professional learning that we have done already in the summer summit and winter summit, um, anything that you want to do over the weekend or learn something new, all of those sessions, those awesome sessions and the videos and the resources are there already. So I'll put that already in the chat. So you can go ahead and bookmark that. Also, be sure to follow us on Facebook, too. We um, are on social media, not only on Twitter, but on Facebook as well. And the last part before we go today is the evaluation. Uh, May and Lucia will still stay on if you have any questions. She already put that in the chat. Um, any last minute questions, um, we'll be happy to help you. And um, again, please reach out to us um, any of your tech coaches, I'd be happy to help you. And just a reminder, everyone, you have 24 hours to fill out the attendance form. So if you're able to, make sure to try to fill it out right now. And if not, within 24 hours so that you can get your credit and make sure that you're registered in ERO. I mean, sorry, Unified Talent. Yeah. And thank you, Connie, for your comment about the all of the videos from the past summer and winter are all up there. So don't forget about them. And please share it with your um, other colleagues as well. Uh, the site for the QR code um, now, which is nice, is that we don't have to use a site. If you go to your toolbar, or your little search button, there's already one right there. So all I did was just um, download it and then insert it to my slide. So it's a new feature. I also shared it in, I'll put it in my Tech Tuesday website in there, but that's another tip that um, Chrome now has. So we don't have to use any more extensions or any more um, QR code websites. It's right there already embedded. You can also bookmark this website. Everything that I share on Twitter is on here as well.
Thank you so much, Sandra, too, for coming. Bye-bye, Vanessa.